So nearly two years ago, I made a video where I ranked my 50 greatest players of all time. Since then, a lot has changed, as some modern players have continued to build their legacy, while some others have regressed a bit. Along with that, I've actually changed my mind on a couple spots on this list. As time passes and you learn more about each player, your perspectives can begin to change. That happened to me in just a couple spots on this list. The reason why this video is a top 30 video instead of a top 50 is because most of the significant changes on the list took place in the top 30 spots. Now with all of this being said, this is just my list and my opinions, and in no way am I claiming that any spot on this list is an objective fact, but rather it just reflects my honest perspective. Now once you see it, you might think it's a wild list. But I honestly think a lot of lists online are very similar because people are too scared to give their honest rankings. I've seen just how angry people can get at a list, and I believe that social pressure incentivizes people to develop a general similar consensus. With that being said, that's not how I operate. This is my list based on my experiences, and people can cry, rage, or threaten me. I don't care. This is how I see it, and I want to know how you see it in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number 30, John Stockton. Naturally, he dropped just a bit on my list, as modern superstars have been climbing their way up the ranks in the last two years. Stockton is one of the more controversial players on this list. I've seen the now famous criticism that he doesn't have a left hand. But listen, if Gary Payton says that you're the hardest player he's ever had to guard, then you know what you're doing. Stockton certainly wasn't anything flashy, but he was extremely fundamentally sound throughout the entirety of his career. He's one of those legends who excelled both in longevity and peak performance. Of the six seasons with the highest assist per game averages in NBA history, John Stockton has five of them, which is truly absurd. On top of that, he's the all-time leader in assists and steals, and neither category is remotely close. The one glaring omission from his resume is obviously an NBA championship. With one, he likely would have been in the top 20, but without it, he finds himself at the starting point of my list. Number 29, Kevin McHale. I feel like my fellow old heads will understand this ranking of McHale, but younger fans don't hear enough about the greatness of this legend. Before Nikola Jokic was the standard of efficiency for the big man, there was Kevin McHale. In the history of the NBA, only two players have averaged more than 20 points per game while shooting over 60% from the field and over 80% from the free throw line. They were Nikola Jokic and Kevin McHale. He was one of the most reliable, low-post threats that the game has ever seen, with footwork that is second only to Akeem Olajuwon. Along with that, his 8-foot-long wingspan made him a terrifying defender in the painted area. He was also tougher than 99% of the players in the league, as he put up these numbers in the 1987 Finals, while playing on a broken foot. Add six all-defense teams and three championship rings to his resume, and I'm very comfortable having the man known as the Torture Chamber this high on the list. Number 28, John Havlicek. If it wasn't for Bill Russell and Larry Bird, then I believe this man would be known as the greatest player in Celtics history. Havlicek was one of the all-time great two-way players, as he was a force from the perimeter on offense and a stifling antagonizer on defense. At his peak, he was averaging 28.9 points per game, and he made eight all-defense teams throughout his career, which is an achievement that only a few wing players have ever accomplished. More importantly than anything else, he was a pivotal star in the Celtics dynasty days, as he won a whopping eight championship rings throughout his playing career. He won his lone finals MVP in 1974, but he should have won several more, considering how the finals MVP award wasn't introduced to the NBA until 1969. Without Bill Russell, John Havlicek wouldn't be as successful as he was. But without John Havlicek, Bill Russell wouldn't have been as successful as he was either. Number 27, Dirk Nowitzki. This legend was so ahead of his time, and this MVP winning 7-footer was one of the greatest perimeter shooters that the game has ever seen. He was certainly a more capable defensive player in his youth, 
But as he aged and as much of his quickness left him, he began to devolve into a below average defensive player, which keeps him from being higher on my list. With that being said, Dirk has one of, if not the, most impressive title runs in NBA history, where he led his Dallas Mavericks to defeat the Super Team Miami Heat in 2011. For his career as a whole, he made a total of 12 All-NBA teams, while putting up over 31,000 points, earning him the sixth spot on the NBA's all-time scoring list. Number 26, Nikola Jokic. This man wasn't even in my top 50 two years ago, which tells you how great he's been of late. Simply, he's one of the most efficient and well-rounded offensive players that the game has ever seen, as he can distribute as well as just about anyone, while being an extremely accurate scorer from all areas of the court. He's won two MVPs and now a Finals MVP, while delivering the Denver Nuggets their first championship in franchise history. The only thing holding him back is his defensive play, that leaves much to be desired. With that being said, the Joker is the youngest player on this entire list, which means he has plenty of time to skyrocket up my list, which I believe he'll do. After all, Michael Jordan was the same age as Nikola Jokic when he won his first championship ring. Number 25, Giannis. Due to recency bias, it might not be a popular opinion to have Giannis ranked slightly ahead of Jokic. But based on their accolades and their complete body of work so far, I believe Giannis maintains a slight edge. He has more All-NBA selections, infinitely more All-Defense Team selections, an equal amount of MVPs, and an equal amount of championships while being way ahead on the statistical all-time lists. Due to his recent failure, and yes, I will call it a failure, in the first round of the playoffs, Giannis hasn't done any climbing up the list since I originally did my 50 greatest, but he is the second youngest player in this group of 30, so I know for a fact that the two-way Greek freak is far from done climbing my list. Number 24, Kevin Garnett. KG is a player who I tend to rank higher than most people, one of my hottest takes is that there really isn't much of a difference between Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. It's just that one spent the majority of his playing days in the perpetually failing Minnesota organization, while the other had the stability and support of San Antonio. KG literally led the Timberwolves in every major stat category while he was in Minnesota. And then, when he finally joined a team built to contend, he immediately won the Defensive Player of the Year award and the championship, as he was just exiting the prime of his career. With him being one of the most well-rounded players on this list, I'm confident that the big ticket deserves to be as high as I've ranked him. Number 23, Carl Malone. The mailman actually dropped a couple spots since my original list, and it's for reasons that go beyond the current players climbing the list. I'll explain that in a second. Carl was one of the most consistent and dominant scorers throughout his long career, and he was a pretty solid rebounder and defender as well. Two major aspects prevent him from rivaling Tim Duncan in the conversation of the greatest power forwards in NBA history. For one, he had a nasty habit of turning the ball over as he has the second most turnovers in NBA history. If he was a distributing point guard, then his turnover statistic would be more acceptable, but as a power forward, it's just not. Along with that, Carl had several opportunities at winning a championship ring, but without one, it certainly limits his ranking on the all-time list. Number 22, David Robinson. It was only recently that I realized how controversial my higher ranking of Robinson is. Regardless of moments where he was outshined in the postseason, the Admirals still managed to get two championship rings, while being one of the greatest rim protectors in NBA history. He made eight all-defense teams throughout his career, and was the Defensive Player of the Year in 1992, which are achievements that Nikola Jokic can only dream of, which is who many people claimed I should have ahead of Robinson. But I don't believe he's earned that just yet. On top of Robinson's proven resume is an MVP award and a high ranking on many of the all-time statistical lists. Number 21, Dwayne Wade. Remember how I said Malone dropped an extra spot? Well, Dwayne Wade is the reason why, as I'm starting to feel like I ranked him too low on my original list. The Flash was a solid two-way player and is in the conversation with Michael Jordan as the greatest shot-blocking guards in NBA history. 
He won three NBA championships, had an epic Finals MVP performance in 2006, and many people forget that he was probably the MVP of the 2008 Redeem team, although Kobe and LeBron seem to get all the shine. In a league with great former two guards like Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, it's easy for Wade to be taken for granted, which is why I'm moving him a bit up my list. Number 20, Charles Barkley. Until the day I die, I'll be telling people that Charles Barkley was so much better than most people realize. Early in his career, he was a remarkable blend of strength, speed, and athleticism. He's quote, officially listed at 6'6", yet Barkley himself said that he's around 6'4". Regardless of which I claim, people in the chat always get mad at me. Regardless of what it actually is, Chuck always played way bigger than his height would suggest, as he was one of the greatest rebounders in NBA history to go along with the fact that he was one of the most efficient scorers of all time, as he was frequently shooting around 60% from the field during his prime. Add in the 1993 MVP, and I'm more than comfortable putting a round mound of rebound in my top 20. Number 19, Kevin Durant. He's one of the most skilled and most difficult players to guard that the league has ever seen. He was the league MVP in 2014, and just a season prior, he had a 50-40-90 year while averaging 28 points per game. He has won the NBA championship twice and was the finals MVP on both occasions. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm one of those people who don't believe that all rings are created equal. Joining a 73-9 team that just beat you when you choked away a massive series lead is not something that I'm simply gonna look past, and I'm certainly never gonna forget it. If Durant had won a ring before or after, then it would do a lot to validate himself, but he hasn't done that, which is why he isn't higher on my list regardless of his tremendous top 10 capable talent. Number 18, Elgin Baylor. For his size, he may have been the greatest rebounder to ever live, as he got as high as 19.8 rebounds per game, at only the height of 6'5". Along with that, Baylor was the most prolific scorer in Lakers history until Kobe Bryant showed up, as he has the NBA Finals record for the most points scored in a Finals game with a total of 61. Essentially, Elgin Baylor is what you get if Michael Jordan gave Dennis Rodman some of his scoring ability, and for this reason, I have him higher on my list than most people typically do. Number 17, Oscar Robertson. He was one of the most well-rounded offensive threats that the game has ever seen. Everyone talks about his triple-double season in 1962, but what people usually fail to consider is how he averaged a 30-point triple-double over the course of his first six seasons in the NBA. Talk about taking the league by storm. With more championships, he would certainly be much higher on my list. He finally got his first championship in 1971 as a member of the Milwaukee Bucks. And although Oscar was certainly a contributing star, he wasn't the leader of that team, as that was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Regardless, his statistical impact is one that hasn't been matched at the point guard position, which is why it wouldn't be a solid top 20 without him. Number 16, Isaiah Thomas. My life has turned into some kind of a sick joke where now I, of all people, have become one of the biggest defenders of Isaiah's legacy. I hated this guy growing up, as he was the face of the bad boy Pistons. With that being said, I couldn't deny his talent, as Isaiah was one of the greatest dual threats that the game has ever seen, as he could destroy you by dropping 20 assists in a game, and then the next game, he'll destroy you by scoring 40 points. This all-time great ball handler led his Pistons to back-to-back -back championships in the late 80s. And if it wasn't for the phantom foul, he probably would have won three straight. He's also one of the most clutch performers of all time, like when he set the NBA Finals record by scoring 25 points in a quarter on a swollen ankle. Or like when he dropped 16 points in just 94 seconds of a pivotal NBA playoff game. I watched it, I dreaded it, and I firmly believe that Isaiah was one of the best to ever do it. Number 15, Julius Irving. Notice how this video is not titled the 30 greatest NBA players of all time. If it was, I would have to have the doctor much lower on this list. But when you include his ABA accomplishments, he has one of the most impressive careers of all time. 
Between the two leagues, he has 16 All-Star appearances, four league MVPs, and three championship rings. Along with that, he was one of the most dynamic high flyers, and the man was scary in fast break situations, dunking on anyone and everyone who stood in his path. He was also a member of the nearly undefeated 1983 76ers, who some Philly fans still believe is the greatest NBA team of all time. Number 14, Moses Malone. I'm so tired of hearing people's lists of the greatest centers of all time, and somehow he keeps getting omitted from it. Moses wasn't just one of the greatest rebounders in league history, but I believe he was objectively the greatest offensive rebounder of all time, which is a trait you just can't overappreciate, as any team would love to have that many second chance opportunities. He was a pretty darn good scorer too, as he got as high as 31.1 points per game in 1982. For his career as a whole, he won six rebounding titles. He was a three-time league MVP, and he was the finals MVP of the championship winning 1983 76ers. Number 13, Jerry West. Anyone who objectively watches his highlights and pays attention to his skills can see that West was so ahead of his time. Jerry had fantastic mechanics on his jumper and was extremely crafty at getting the shots he wanted. Quite simply, he was one of the greatest scorers and playoff scorers to ever live. The underrated part of his game though was his defensive ability. Jerry was arguably the best pickpocket during his playing days, and he was a remarkably sneaky shot blocker. For his career, he made five all-defense teams, and all of those were in the twilight of his career, simply because the honor did not exist until that point. If they had always been available for him to win, then he might have had more all-defense team selections than any other guard in league history. Add in a championship ring as a member of the 1972 Lakers, which was the team that won 33 straight games, and he certainly deserves a spot in the top 15. Number 12, Steph Curry. On my list, Steph made a bigger jump than any other player, shooting 11 spots up the list. Since that initial ranking, he's become the all-time leader in three-pointers made. He's won a fourth NBA championship ring, and he secured his first finals MVP. But let's be real, it really should have been a second. Along with that, Steph has one of the greatest single seasons on any resume as we witnessed his legendary 2016 unanimous MVP season, where he had the highest scoring 50-40-90 season in league history. Some people want to move him into the top 10, but I think that's a little too much, considering how Steph is not an elite defensive player, and is kind of just a one-way player. Sure, he's not horrible on defense, but he's certainly not one of the best at the position. Based on my list, he's either the second or the third greatest one-way player of all time. So with that in mind, the 12th spot is certainly nothing to scoff at. Number 11, Shaquille O'Neal. This was one of the more controversial spots on my previous list, but I'm sticking to it. Now I understand Shaq had one of the top three greatest peaks that I've ever seen, but that's the thing, we have to emphasize his peak because Shaq didn't maintain his elite form as well as just about every other player in the top 10. This shouldn't be a debated point either, considering how Shaq's bad conditioning is something he personally admitted to in a public conversation with Kobe Bryant. With that being said, Shaq is as close to being in the top 10 as you can be without making it. And he won four championship rings and three finals MVPs. He should have been the first unanimous MVP winner in 2000, but one smooth-brained voter went with Allen Iverson instead. Number 10, Hakeem Olajuwon. He has the fewest championship rings of any player in my top 12, but I don't believe that's any fault of his own, as the dream was devoid of superstar talent help throughout the prime years of his career. Sure, he had Ralph Sampson very early on, but it didn't take long for Sampson's back issues to ruin that. Of players who won back-to-back -back championships, Hakeem Olajuwon was the only player to do it while not having a single all-star teammate. He was a beast in many aspects as he not only has a quadruple double on his resume, but he nearly had two in the same month. He's one of the top three greatest defensive players in league history, and he was often among the league leaders in scoring as well, which very few players can claim. 
The dream was so good that he was selected before Michael Jordan, yet no one in Houston even regrets it. Number 9. Tim Duncan The big fundamental was the model of consistency in the game of basketball, as he earned himself 15 all-defense teams and won 5 NBA championships over the span of 16 years. His 2003 postseason was one of the most dominant playoff stretches, as he historically crushed the New Jersey Nets, nearly getting the only quadruple double in NBA playoff history. Thanks to a talented supporting cast, Duncan was able to compete for championships long after his prime days were behind him, which is why I don't have him ranked as high as some others might. Still, Duncan certainly deserves a spot in the top 10. Number 8. Kobe Bryant I moved the Mamba up a spot since my last list, as I figured I had him a bit too low. In terms of his peak, I believe Kobe has a solid argument for a spot in the top 5. But when you look at his career as a whole, it's not quite as glamorous. Kobe took a while to get going in his career, as his first few seasons saw limited production and limited minutes. And his final few seasons in the NBA were straight up ugly as he was rotating between major injuries while shooting 35% from the field on nearly 20 shots per game. Still, how great were those glory days? At his peak, Kobe was scoring 35 points per game while being first team all defense, which is something only Michael Jordan has basically done as well. Kobe won five championships and his last one doesn't feel appreciated enough as Kobe led his Lakers to defeat the stacked Boston Celtics while he had a broken index finger on his shooting hand. What other great has a claim like that? Number 7. Magic Johnson Almost the entirety of his career, Magic was competing for NBA championships. In my opinion, he has the best single playoff performance of all time, as he dropped this stat line in Game 6 of the 1980 Finals, which he did as a rookie while filling in for an injured Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at center. Magic was the embodiment of playing the game the right way, as he specialized in making his teammates better. For his career, he won five NBA championships, he was the finals MVP three times, and he won three league MVPs. Magic also made nine trips to the NBA Finals before his first retirement, and for perspective, Magic only played 12 seasons before that first retirement. Some have him ranked even higher than I do, but for me personally, a lack of solid defensive prowess is what limits his ranking. Number 6. Larry Bird I know, it's a hot take to have him ranked over Magic, but the thing about Larry Bird is that he was competing in the much tougher Eastern Conference, as the East was a bloodbath in the 1980s. Along with that, I just believe Bird was the more impressive player from an individual perspective, as he had no holes in his game. He was a lethal scorer, he was an elite rebounder, he was an all-time great passer, and he was an extremely underrated defensive player, which is a topic I've made entire videos about. At one point, Bird had 50-40-90 percentages while averaging close to 30 points per game over a 5-year stretch, which quite simply is one of the greatest individual achievements of all time. If it wasn't for his back injuries cutting his career very short, then Bird may have been able to build a career strong enough to consider him in the top three. Number 5. Bill Russell Let me just say this plainly. If Bill Russell was an efficient league-leading scorer, he'd easily be my choice as the greatest player of all time. It's kind of astonishing that I'm putting him this high on my list, considering how he was severely limited offensively. Now with that being said, Russell always claimed that he did the things that actually won basketball games, and who am I to argue with him? In his career, Russell won 11 championship rings, including a ridiculous 8th straight. Along with that, he was 10-0 in series deciding 7th games, and he always played well in those instances. To this day, many people believe he's the GOAT defensive player, and if the Defensive Player of the Year award had existed, he would have been collecting them like Infinity Stones. At the end of the day, it's all about winning, and anyone could call him their GOAT, and they'd get no arguments from me. Number 4. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar When it comes to the all-time statistics, Kareem has got an argument as good as anyone's for the top spot. What's crazy is that Kareem is second all-time in scoring, 
and if blocks had been calculated in his first few seasons in the league, he would probably be the all-time leader in block shots as well. If players like Kevin Durant get a boost for being difficult to guard, then so should Kareem, who had the most indefensible shot ever, his patented skyhook. The only thing drawing him back is the fact that he was not the best player in over half of his championship teams. Regardless, he earned 15 All-NBA teams, 11 All-Defense teams, and a whopping 6 league MVPs. So he's certainly worthy of being at least in the 4th spot. Number 3. Will Chamberlain Everyone thinks I'm crazy, and that's fine because I'm not pumping the brakes on this so-called crazy train. To me, Will Chamberlain is far greater than people usually give him credit for. Stop and think about what an average of 50 points and 25 rebounds looks like on a nightly basis. I don't think people actually take the time to fathom that. Wilt broke so many records throughout his career that they just started calling him the record book. People try to belittle his accomplishments and make sense of it by saying that he played against weaker competition. But when you consider that Wilt played against Bill Russell, Walt Bellamy, and Nate Thurman each around 12 to 16 times per season, then you start to realize just how impressive his accomplishments were. Honestly, I could elaborate on Wilt's ranking endlessly, but if you've seen any of my Wilt videos before, you get it. Number 2. LeBron James A couple years ago, I had LeBron fans all up in their feelings when I ranked him 4th on my list. Honestly, that was less about a negative view of LeBron and more about my positive views of Kareem and Wilt. At this point though, LeBron has built up such a body of work that he has to be at least in the second spot. He's earned an absurd 19 All-Star selections. He's won 4 NBA Championships, 4 Finals MVPs, and 4 League MVPs. He's now the NBA's all-time leading scorer, the all-time leading playoff scorer, and he's up to the fourth spot on the NBA's all-time assists list. Honestly, there is an argument for LeBron to take the number one spot, and I truly believe that. But that argument would have to focus on the complete body of work of his NBA career so far, which is only becoming more impressive the longer he plays. For me, peak performance is what's most important though, which takes us to our number one spot. Number one, Michael Jordan. Six championships in eight years. He earned nine first team all defense selections and he won the scoring title in all of those seasons as well. Not only was Jordan 6-0 in the NBA finals, but he was constantly breaking records in those finals. A lot of Gen Z LeBron fans want to discredit Jordan's competition and try to belittle his dominance over the league. But here's the thing. The only reason you're able to belittle Jordan's competition is because MJ dominated the league in the first place. Let's take Karl Malone for example. If Michael Jordan never existed, Karl Malone would have had 3 league MVPs instead of 2. He would have had 5 scoring titles instead of 0, and he would have won 2 championships instead of 0. Without MJ as an obstacle, Malone is rivaling Tim Duncan for the title of the greatest power forward of all time. But because Jordan existed, he's treated like an afterthought, as his legacy is completely different. That's the effect MJ had on the league, as he kept Malone, Stockton, Barkley, Ewing, Kemp, Penny, Miller, and many others from ever winning an NBA championship. This is just one of the many reasons why he's still my choice as the greatest player of all time. So what do you guys think? How does your list differ from mine? I look forward to hearing your input in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.